What you just saw happened only a month ago in August. A Ukrainian Leopard 2 tank was hunting Russian soldiers through the streets of Pokrovsk. And to do that job, it brought a 120 millimeter barrel of pure firepower, destroying everything in its path. Few people realize there is a serious problem. That same tank you saw dominating the streets is also easy prey and an extremely valuable target. While it hunts soldiers on the ground, thousands of Russian drones patrol the skies, hunting it. And unfortunately, they are winning that battle. To give you an idea of the scale, Russia launched more than 6,000 drones against Ukraine in July alone, 15 times more than the year before. Each of those drones can turn a multi-million dollar tank into scrap in seconds. The tanks, frankly, are clearly losing this war. What the Russians did not expect was that Ukraine had a card up its sleeve, a card that could change the game completely. And the most surprising part? Ukraine plans to use its own Leopard tanks to do it, but not in the way you imagine. To understand the brilliance of that solution, first look at the size of the problem Ukraine faces in the sky. In July 2024, Russia launched 423 drones against Ukraine. It seemed like a lot then, but compared with July 2025, it was only a rehearsal. That month, the number exploded to more than 6,129 drones, an increase of 1,378% in a single year. And those figures still don't tell the whole story. Between March and May 2025, Russia launched nearly 8,000 drones, averaging about 110 per attack. Every night, cities like Kyiv live under the constant terror of air raid sirens, a deafening sound that can go on for hours. Worse, Russia developed a disturbing pattern. Whenever there is a peace talk or an important diplomatic event, Putin responds with massive drone strikes. After the Istanbul talks in May, Russia attacked with more than 250 drones. When Putin spoke with Trump by phone in July, the same night saw 750 drones launched at Ukrainian targets. The Alaska summit in August was followed by almost 550 drones. And in September, Russia broke its own record with 823 drones and missiles launched in a single night. Putin has turned drones into a weapon of psychological terror. Air raid sirens in Kyiv sounded for 43 hours in a single week. Imagine living like that, trying to sleep, work, and lead a normal life when the sky can bring death at any moment. But the problem is not only the number of drones. It is the cruel math behind each interception. A Russian Shahed drone costs between $10,000 and $50,000 to produce domestically. Imported from Iran, it can cost $193,000. Even so, those figures are low compared with what Ukraine must spend to defend itself. When Ukraine detects an approaching drone swarm, it must choose how to respond, and every option is economically disastrous. An Iris-T missile costs about $485,000. A NASAMS missile can reach 1.2 million. A single Patriot missile tops out at roughly $4 million. Do you see the problem? Ukraine spends a $4 million missile to destroy a $20,000 drone. It's a war of resources Ukraine cannot win alone in the long term. Even when Ukraine intercepts 100% of attacking drones, it still loses on the economic front. Russia might spend $200 million on drones, but it forces Ukraine to spend $2 billion on interceptions. Each intercepted drone is an economic victory for Russia, even when the drone is destroyed. Worse still, Putin can produce drones faster than NATO can produce expensive missiles. Then came a surprising twist. The answer arrived from the other side of Europe, Germany. Engineers at Rheinmetall had a bold idea. What if you could take tanks no longer fit for direct combat and turn them into drone hunters? What if you could do that for far less money than traditional missiles? After all, Ukraine has hundreds of Leopard 1 tanks received from several European countries. Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands sent these war veterans, which served for decades in their armed forces. These tanks were built in 1965, when German designers believed heavy armor had become obsolete. The logic was simple. If new anti-tank weapons can penetrate any armor, why carry extra weight? Better to invest in mobility and firepower. So the Leopard 1 was designed with only 10 to 70 millimeters of steel armor, enough to resist machine guns and small automatic cannons, but as you saw, completely inadequate against modern weapons. In today's war, any kamikaze drone or anti-tank missile can turn these tanks into ovens. That is why most Leopard 1s sat idle in depots, waiting for a mission that never came. 
A Ukrainian soldier from the Da Vinci unit put it plainly, our drones now burn enemy vehicles while they are still approaching our lines. If our drones do that to Russian tanks, the Russian drones do the same to our Leopards. It became clear that using a Leopard 1 in a frontal attack today is practically a death sentence for the entire crew. Armor that could withstand the weapons of the 1960s is practically paper against the drones of 2025. And that's where Rhine Metal's engineers saw what others didn't, an opportunity hidden inside a weakness. What if the Leopard 1's biggest flaw could become its greatest strength? What if the thin armor that made it useless in ground combat made it perfect for an entirely new role? Anti-air defense doesn't need thick armor. It needs speed, mobility, and the ability to reposition in seconds. And in that sense, the Leopard 1 is ideal. With its 830 horsepower MTU engine, the Leopard 1 can reach 70 kilometers per hour on paved roads and travel up to 600 kilometers without refueling. It can move alongside any mechanized unit and reach where it's needed almost instantly. Then came the revolutionary idea. Remove the original turret completely and replace it with something entirely new. The Leopard 1's old combat turret weighed 10 tons and carried a 105 millimeter cannon. In its place, engineers installed something that looks like it belongs in a science fiction film, the Sky Ranger air defense system. The Sky Ranger turret weighs just 4.5 tons, less than half the original. That reduces the vehicle's overall weight and dramatically improves acceleration and maneuverability. The lighter chassis now performs better on rough terrain and can move with greater agility under fire. Inside that compact turret lies technology, so advanced that a military engineer from the 1960s would think. It came from another world. At its heart is a 12 mm Orlikon revolver cannon, capable of firing 1,000 rounds per minute, 16 rounds every second. It's essentially a machine gun that fires explosive cannon shells. The gun's effective range reaches 4,000 meters, creating a defensive bubble around the vehicle. Any drone entering that zone has only seconds to live. The turret carries 252 ready-to-fire rounds, enough to fight multiple swarms before needing to reload. The system can operate in either automatic or manual mode, depending on the situation. But here's where the real magic happens. The ammunition. These aren't regular shells. They're ahead rounds, and they work very differently. And a head round doesn't need to hit the drone directly, hitting a small, Fast target from kilometers away would be nearly impossible. Instead, each projectile uses advanced sensors and timing technology. The moment the shell leaves the barrel, inductive sensors measure its exact speed. That data is instantly sent to the fire control computer, which is already tracking the target using precision radars. The computer calculates the drone's path, the projectile's trajectory, and the perfect interception point. When the shell reaches that exact point, the electronic fuse detonates, releasing 152 tungsten projectiles. These form a deadly, cone-shaped metal cloud. The density is so precise that it's statistically impossible for a drone to pass through without being hit. The Russian drone flies into this tungsten storm and is literally shredded. Engine, sensors, electronics, structure, everything is destroyed at once. Tests prove just how lethal the system is. A swarm of eight drones was wiped out with only 18 shots, most of them destroyed within the first six bursts. And here's the genius of it all. Each ahead round costs just $4,000. Compare that to a $4 million Patriot missile. Ukraine can fire 1,000 ahead rounds for the price of one Patriot. It can fire 250 for the cost of a NASAMS missile or 112 for an IRIS-T missile. And remember the Shahed drone that costs around $20,000. The Ahead round is five times cheaper than the drone it destroys. For the first time, Ukraine flipped the economics of war. Now it's Russia that loses money with every drone it sends, even the ones that manage to fly. But the Sky Ranger isn't just about guns and ammunition. It also has the eyes and brain of a modern hunter, technology that separates a good defense system from a revolutionary one. It uses ASA radars that scan the sky constantly. Unlike old mechanical radars that rotate like dishes, these can track multiple targets in all directions simultaneously. Once they detect something suspicious, a separate tracking radar takes over. This radar has incredible precision and scanning speed. 
able to follow even small drones flying in tight formations. When a swarm approaches, the system automatically prioritizes targets. First the closest drones, then the fastest, then those heading toward critical sites. From detection to destruction, everything happens in seconds. Each Leopard equipped with a Sky Ranger turret can protect an area four kilometers wide. And because the platform is mobile, Traveling at up to 70 kilometers per hour, it can quickly reposition wherever the threat is greatest. And here's the thing. This isn't just a theoretical concept. It already works in practice. Ukraine is using the Gepard, an older air defense system built on the same basic idea. Ukrainian crews report success rates of up to 90% against shade drones. The Gepard is essentially the grandfather of the Sky Ranger. It also uses a Leopard, one chassis and dual 35mm cannons, but with 1970s technology. Even so, it has proven devastatingly effective. Ukrainian. Soldiers call it the best weapon against Shahed. Drones. Battlefield reports describe crews, shooting down dozens of drones and even cruise missiles. And there's good news. In September, Rheinmetall signed a contract worth hundreds of millions of euros to supply Sky Ranger systems to Ukraine. Each system costs about 12 million daro, meaning dozens of these drone hunters are expected to arrive by the end of 2025. If successful, this system could completely redefine how armies think about air defense. Military doctrine is evolving in real time, forced to adapt to the changing battlefield. When tanks can't advance on the front lines, turn them into Sky Hunters. When expensive missiles become unsustainable, return to smart cannons. When war changes, adapt or become prey. It's a powerful lesson in wartime adaptation. Victory doesn't belong to those with the newest or most expensive technology. It belongs to those who adapt what they already have to meet real threats. Now tell me, what do you think of transforming old tanks into drone hunters? Do you believe this idea represents the future of warfare or just a temporary fix? Leave your thoughts in the comments. If this helped you understand this revolution in modern warfare, subscribe and share the video. See you next time.